Over 60% of crime in the UK occurs after dark. Taking the police into our town centres to patrol the nighttime revellers. Back off, Stop Stop But on an average night, it's not only the drunks and clubbers that officers will have to deal with. In tonight's nightclubs, we follow Colwyn Bay officers on a drugs raid. <laughs> Wrexham police deal with half a dozen women scorned. This lad pays the price for his substance abuse. And in Exmouth, this head banging fool falls foul of the night cops. If you're looking for a nine-to-five job, then policing is not for you. It's at night when the police are most needed. Dealing with a whole range of crime and bringing law and order to the battlefields that are our towns and cities. Ex-Royal Marine, PC Ian Schofield knows a thing or two about battlefields. But tonight, he's more concerned with what's going on in space. Full moon tonight, I believe. So, uh, that most probably proved me totally wrong on camera. But generally, when we get a full moon, we do get a surge, shall we say, of uh, anti-social or stupid behaviour. Hello, lady, OK? PC Schofield's watch is Exmouth, and his fears of lunar lunacy seem to be well founded. Yes, mate. Frank! Frank, are you all right? Yeah. You're a bit unsteady there, mate. Do you not think we'd be better to get a taxi? Yeah. You're looking a bit worse for wear, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, you'll see you in a wee bit, guys. Yeah. We'll see you in a wee bit. <laughs> 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 when, you, when you see on telly go, yeah, PC Schofield was right, it was right. Was right, and he, he's always going to be right. <laughs> he's just a copy, is. He's we'll just... see you in a bit, guys. OK, I'll we'll see you later. That geezer we were chatting to, he's had his moments, but generally he's, he's not too bad a lad. Well, you can see there, he, uh, he's had quite a bit to drink. Quite boisterous, but he's not aggressive in any way. And hopefully it will remain that way, and uh, we most probably will see him late, but hopefully in a positive way and not a negative. Keeping an eye on locals such as Frank is an essential part of PC Schofield's nightly regime. It's the known faces or persistent offenders who cause most of the trouble. A select few who waste valuable police resources. 60% of PC Schofield's work at night is booze related. Whether it be dealing with punch-ups or, as he is now, with a girl who thinks some blokes nicked her handbag. What's the matter? Um, someone's taking my handbag. I know, mate. But... Trying to work out what's going on is difficult, especially when the girl in question has had a few sherbets. see the person? Um, To add to PC Schofield's troubles, the lad she's accusing is sticking his oar in. No, I'm asking you a question. What have you got to go to? Just, just leave it at the moment, Beetlejuice, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, all, all, all I'm saying is, Beetle, chat to you in a moment, mate. Just leave it at the moment, OK? With allegations being banded around and nobody making any sense, the best that PC Schofield can do is send the girl on her way. ..knows what to do. At the moment, there's very little we can do because we don't even know we're looking for love. But PC Schofield is a dedicated copper and he still wants to find out exactly what's going on. <laughs> what's, what's been occurring from your side? From my point of view, she's slightly drunk. She's but his attention is drawn away by the reappearance 
of a familiar face. All right, Frankie, do you want to just move on a minute, mate, and deal with something for me, old mate? Thank you. Mate, right, end the day, <laughs> a load of shit. He was moving on and going, you know. We know, well, basically, I was in there and I know exactly what she's doing. Frankie, I've got no live, mate. I'm trying to live. sort something out, mate. Just sort out. PC Schofield tries to calm Frank down, but this is a bloke intent on getting himself nicked. Frank, watch the road. I smashed the back of the road. Don't do that, Frankie, or you'll end up getting nicked. Go to hand, mate. I don't know. Fuck's sake. Frankie. Come on. Hey, mate. <laughs> Do you want to get the lift no, right, no, mate, no, no, section no. five? Oh, yeah, yeah. PC Schofield oh, yeah. tries to reason with Frank. He's like, what have nothing to do? I've got nothing to do! But there comes a point where his safety and those of the officers on the ground is called into question. And other calming techniques need to be employed. Relax, relax, relax. Relax. This method of restraint may look violent, but the night cops are in full control. Two officers force Frankie to the ground, whilst PC Schofield protects the man's head from smashing into the road. Right, Frank, listen to me. I'm going to double lock these, Frank. Frank, Frankie, we're going to get you up, mate. I don't like you, just a little bit, please. Frank, roll towards me, Frank. Bend that knee, pal. Bend the knee. OK, we're going to lift you up, mate, after three. One, two... Now handcuffed, the lad seems to have calmed down and tries to bargain with the cops. Why'd you do that, mate? Because I've got nowhere to live. But it's a bit, uh... Just let me go, let me go. Just let go gently, gently. I know we kick up. I will not kick up. Just gently let go. We know each other, mate, don't we? No need for it, is there? Well, exactly. So exactly. Don't so what have you done that? No, I'm not going to kick off. I don't intend to let go and I won't kick off. Please, brutality! No! Tell him to let go and I won't kick off. Tell him to let go and I will not kick off. Tell him to let go, mate. I've not got hold of the cops, I've got your arm, pal. OK, just step your side. No, no. At all. What's at all? Why aren't you going in there, Frank? Let go of him gently. Go on. Go on, let go of him. Chill. Just let go of his Just let go of his mate. Two nine of you last time. I'm not fucking leaving. Can you just let go? It may have taken nine officers last time, but tonight it takes just three. To get arrested. There was a chance of earlier, fine. He said, arrest me, we don't go to kick the van in, which he started doing. God! 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 Fuck him! Oh, God! Ah! You got me! OK, shut that door. I'm shut, I'm shut, I'm shut. What is for? OK, see yourself up. You're the tool, man. Why are you doing that? What we're, what we're doing, what we're doing. Frank's state of mind has left PC Schofield baffled. Ah! Good the snows, what's happened there? Maybe, maybe he's on something else apart from beer. But well, we saw him earlier, nice and friendly, and he's now insisted they arrest him. I've told him to calm down. He's threatened, you can hear him now, to fill the van in. He started banging the van. The rest's history. All PC Schofield needs to do now is get the screaming delinquent safely down to lock up. I've tried reasoning with a uh, young Frank in the back. He seems to be up and down as if he's on something, to be perfectly honest. Fucking animal, please! Can hear him. One minute he's OK, he's not going to kick off. Next minute he's going to... It's going to take ten of us, nine of us, and he's going to bite us all. So what we're going to do in this case is inform custody to have what we call a welcoming committee, so we've got enough officers to control him should he try to assault officers. They're getting a lot on tape. 
but a lot of people say, oh, it took three coppers to take me down. What we don't realise, we're restraining. If it was a matter of uh, just knocking someone out, you know, we got batons in the light, we could most probably do it single-handed. But to try and do it to cause minimal injury to anybody, that's why it needs two, three or four officers to do it, to ensure they don't get unnecessarily injured. Yeah, 7 zero late, so you can most probably hear over the radio he's kicking off. He seems to be up and down, one minute he's going to behave, next minute he's going to uh, bite all the officers when we get there. To that end, could we have a reception committee ready, please, Safar? Oh, fuck, you fuck! Wait, all of them! Fucking all of them! Fuck! Stop moving the van, Frank Engine, you can see you any good night. PC Schofield has at least a 30-minute drive ahead of him. But at least he's got Frank to keep him company. Don't fucking sit there winding me up. Ah! Ah! Wait! Fucking wait! Hello, Dave. The reception committee are on hand to restrain him if needs be. But once again, Frank seems to have calmed down. The night cops thought it would be too dangerous for us to follow him in to lock up. And by all accounts, it was a good job. When we got him into the charge room for me to uh, present him to the sergeant, he remained calm, but the crooks come and he wanted a cigarette. With the law, it's no smoking. He kicked off and I was in there on my own with him. He was uncuffed by this time. He started kicking off and I was getting very close to either pepper spraying him or using a preemptive strike, a punch or a blow to try and take him down until help got in. Luckily the custody sergeant and about four others came in, uh, dragged him out. We had to forcibly get him in the cell, pinion him to finish the search. Uh, he's locked up and we've just left there now and he's uh, playing the drum kit on the cell door to the annoyance of all the other clients in there. Frankie may be safely behind bars for the night. For PC Schofield, though, the young man's misdemeanours will keep him awake for some time to come. I've now got to go back, do a file for court, which will take me about two or three hours, before I can go home, and I'm back in at three. Life don't get much better than that. Coming up, the girls' night out that ends up a night in the cells. The suspected dealer. Who gets a property makeover? And this style conscious lad falls foul of the night cops. Colwyn Bay, home to 30,000 people. In the summer, it's a thriving coastal resort. But behind the picture postcard for the guard lie pockets of high social deprivation. Unsurprising then, that areas such as this have record levels of drug abuse. Indeed, North Wales has the highest number of drug-related deaths in the whole country. It's a problem that the police are determined to stamp out, targeting dealers and users alike. Information has come to the attention of Cohen Bay's night cops that a suspected dealer is about to hold a drugs fueled party. Tonight, they're hoping to cash in on this intelligence with an early evening raid. DC Andy Forsyth will lead the 10 man team throughout the operation. Okay. Right, the operation tonight is opera codenamed Operation Anonymous. It's uh, Misuse of Drugs Want. Information has been received that the occupant of that flat, which is listed on your operational order, is dealing from and allowing his premises to be used for taking of controlled drugs. The method, entry is intended to be forced by means of the trained method of entry officers. I've driven past the address about 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, his car's there, his telly's on, so at least one person is in the premises that we know of. Um, so we'll take it from there. The team will take no chances during the raid. Those who enter the building first are highly trained officers who will expect the unexpected. They'll take every precaution, including wearing full body armor and using a 20 kilo battering ram known affectionately as the key. I got the key. 
fully kitted up, the team sets off for the bust. Once at the location, there's no hanging about. Knocking politely on the door will give the suspect time to dispose of any drugs. So niceties are done away with, and they just smash it down. The scene, though, on the other side is not what they were expecting. The intelligence that we had was that uh, he was getting a quantity of drugs, bringing them here to the house where he was having parties at the weekend. There may be no party on, but the search for drugs takes place regardless. Whilst PC Rob Darnell starts combing the kitchen for evidence, DC Forsyth searches the suspect. In operations such as this, it's not just controlled substances that the cops are looking for. What you also look out for on any drug related is uh, lists, names, numbers, amounts. That's uh, indicative of any dealing type of activity and provides us a good source of intelligence as well. The officers are thorough and must leave no stone or bag of dried pasta unturned. DC Forsyth has first-hand experience in discovering drugs in obscure places. Because we're looking for drugs, there's a million places you can hide it. Um, I've even found drugs inside children's nappies, underneath mattresses that children are sleeping on. So if people want to hide it, they'll hide it inside light switches, skirting boards. I mean, I think you, you only need to think of your own house, but you can hide stuff in your own house. And, Try and work out for yourself a bag of drugs can be hidden from some of it can be like a couple of pinheads or something like that. So you think in a million places that could be hidden. It's not long before the officers find something, but it's far from the drugs bust of the century. Cannabis might not be just the man in the world, but it appears in this case that the information that the officers were given was incorrect. Unfortunately, tonight uh, he hasn't got the quantity of drug we hoped. Um, he's not going to have any of these wild parties that we've been told about. The raid may not have been the success they hoped it would, but the night cops have to follow up on the leads they've been given. And despite only finding a small amount of cannabis, they have a duty to come down hard on any offender. Well, I've got to inform you at this moment in time, you're under arrest on suspicion of possession of a controlled drug. So we're a caution, you do have to say anything, but it may harm your face, not mention one question, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be even evidence. For that? For that? Yeah, because person? Yeah. Fits on Anything else? There was a small amount of drugs that he claims for personal use. It's not what we'd hoped for, but you win some, you lose some. The man is taken off to custody. Later he was questioned and given a formal caution. <laughs> A disappointing start to the evening for the night cops, but North Wales police don't just concentrate on targeting the dealers. In Wrexham, catching recreational drug users is tonight's prime objective. It's a proactive approach that uses a special breed of night cop. Molly is, um, is a two-year-old black Labrador bitch. Molly's sense of smell is one million times that of a human, a useful attribute in the sniffing out of controlled substances. She doesn't touch the, uh, the drug itself, she just indicates to me that person is carrying a substance or has been using a substance. And she does that by detecting the air scent around that person. In the past year, nearly 20% of the population have taken controlled substances. That's over 11 million people. There's been a significant rise in cocaine abuse, with an estimated three quarters of a million people having taken it in the past 12 months. It's not long before Molly picks up a scent. Can you come have a chat to one of my officers, mate, please? If she's happy to stay there, which she was on that one, we'll have a chat to him. But there are significant problems in using this tactic. It's probably gonna be a lot of contamination this time of night, because you see they're all moving from pub to pub. So uh, just have a quick chat to him as well and see what his uh, account is, really. After he's been searched, this man is found not to be carrying anything illicit and is let go. Molly's presence acts as a deterrent, a visible sign to weekend revelers of the police's intent. <laughs> 
North Wales Police also work closely with the local pubs and clubs. It's an initiative that tonight is proving very successful. Well, I'm doing it sexy, we have. Done a search, we've got bugs on him, we have. I'm you under arrest, okay? So, um, pulled the bag up by the bar, so obviously the staff have searched him and they found the bag on him, so. Ah! Oh, yeah. the nightclub gentleman has been found um, placing that in his pocket he's been confronted by his door staff um, he's then attempted to try and run from the premises he's been detained until the police have arrived uh, he's been arrested this moment time for possession of class a so the night cops have had mixed results but the figures suggest that they are slowly winning the battle against drugs convictions have gone up and slowly but surely the message is getting through It's Saturday night, and the carnival has come to Exmouth. There's 30,000 people on the street, making it the cops' busiest night of the year. Reinforcements in the form of special officers have been drafted in to help maintain law and order. We've got 12 inches, right? Excellent. Well, that'll help stem the problems later, then. All right, mate, see you in a bit. See you later. Cheers, Mark. Right. That's Mark. He's one of the specials that um, work out of Exmouth. He was saying that there's actually 12 members of the special constabulary on this evening, which, um, in my experience, is a, oh! is a first to have that, that many specials on. But obviously, it's quite useful looking at the number of people. The four of us that are working at the moment obviously potentially might struggle to cope with... Uh, with an incident should it occur, so obviously with the assistance of the 12 specials, that should make our job a little bit easier. So it's obviously quite thinned out quite nicely. One of the keys to being a good night cop is having a buddy you can rely on. Working with Chris tonight uh, would tend to be double crewed quite often. We work quite well together, quite different styles of policing, um, which, which tend to complement each other and, and mean that we can deal with things quite effectively. Whilst we do have different styles, the way we work, we do work quite well together and have a similar uh, sort of take on life and the job itself, so I think that works out to be quite, uh, quite handy. And it also helps to have a sense of humour, so, uh, which Andy's got sometimes. <laughs> With so many people out and about, it's not long before they get their first call of the evening. Just had a report of um, an assault coming, and the offender is made off, so we're just going to head towards and see, see what we've got. It appears to be um, a group of youngsters. The culprit is scarpered, but the kids are still loitering. Working well together often means splitting up. They approach the two groups separately to question them. In most of these cases, underage drinking is a factor, and PC wants to know if the youth is carrying any contraband. Bit of the old booze. Obviously, being 16, you shouldn't have that, should you? No. So you're obviously going to disclose that to me, are you? And I'll dispose of it correctly. He's told me I can dispose of them, so they've been disposed of. <laughs> That's just one of the cameras in one of the spots around the town. Events at the carnival are being closely monitored by the police station CCTV control room. Exmouth has cameras at every major intersection and trouble hotspot, giving the night cops a 360 degree view of any incident that occurs. Not a problem. The introduction of CCTV has changed the face of modern policing. In the days before CCTV, if there was an incident, you had to look around for people that were willing to make statements who saw what. And very often the guy would say, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, and you've got no evidence, there's no proof. These days, because we're here filming it, he can then put his hands up and say, it wasn't me, I wasn't there, and all of a sudden, well, I think you were, because it's here, you're looking at it. Main traffic runs. When they spot someone acting suspiciously, they radio through to the night cops who respond immediately. 
Tonight, they've seen a man acting in an antisocial manner, and PC Matt has been given the job of tracking him down. He's being followed by CCTV at the minute, so um, we can uh, not exactly trace his every footstep, but uh, we should be able to keep an eye on what he's doing until we get to him. Control room have radioed through a description. Uh, I wouldn't have thought so. A light coloured shirt, trousers. Light brown hair, chubby face, carrying a Kentucky meal. Control room have directed PC to the carnival funfair. He arrives only to discover that the finger-licking lad has already been detained by a fellow officer. It's my colleague's just speaking to the, uh, the gentleman that we were talking about earlier, who was a problem in the pub, and getting his details, and giving him uh, suitable words of advice. I think. As the suspect is interviewed, PC has a chat with the funfair's on-site security. Do you know the gent? Yeah, I just said to the WPC, he's um, part of the showman's group here. Right. He's the son of one of the ladies that runs the show. They don't want him on the premises. Right. He's a pain in the fucking ass. They don't want him here. No. And, and he upsets the people that come down here. He walks into rides having a case of danger to himself. So he where's, he, where's he supposed to be kicking tonight, then, if he's not actually part of the group? They want him banged up if you can do it. If he doesn't kick off... Um, we can't wheel him away. Right, you disappear, I bet you get a call back from me in ten minutes. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't All be right. surprised. So it turns out that the boozed-up lad is an unwelcome member of the travelling fair. His mum, though, knows exactly what to do with him. I'd like you to take him away, put him in a cell, just chuck him out tomorrow. Ah, motherly love. Is it Mrs Yes. Yeah, we think it's the problem we got Mrs we haven't witnessed anything. What we do is escort him off. Yeah. Then if he comes back, potentially we can arrest him yeah. to prevent a breach of the peace. But I must be honest, at the moment, genuinely, and I'm, I'm not being very, but he has been a gentleman with us. Well, yeah, he is. Hey, so listen, what Mum's saying, all right, so, so we've been fair here. Yeah? Are you happy with him staying on site tonight if he I'm just gets really his happy. head down? No, I'm not really happy with him staying on site tonight. I'd rather him off the pier tonight. So both mum and dad want him banged up, which leaves the night cops with a bit of a dilemma. If we nick him though, what do we nick him for? He's been a gentleman with me. With us, yeah, I know. You know, but mum's adamant she doesn't want him here. The thing is, you were thrown out of um, the pub at Fat Jack's, you made threats to the staff there, which is the initial reason that we're talking to you. Yeah. I know you're being nice as pie with us now, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that once we go, because you've had a few bevies, you're going to cause problems with these people. Nah, and I know you'll say that to me. I could be nice to anybody that's look at. At the moment, we're just trying to decide what to do with this gent. He's, um, he's had a, a skinful to drink. He's already caused disorder in one pub. Um, his parents, who work here at the fair, they're very concerned that if he stays, he's going to kick off and cause problems tonight. Over in Wrexham, there's no carnival, but the night cops are still expecting to be kept busy. This evening, our task primarily is public order, concentrating mainly on Wrexham Town Centre. And they don't even have to travel far before things kick off. A fight has broken out in full view of the van. Shelly! Shelly! Let her go! 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 Fighting on the street is not advised. Doing it in front of a van load of night cops, well, that's just plain idiotic. Even as they're separated, though, there's time for a parting shot. A stiletto to the groin. Bullseye. Hey, you got all this one as well? No, she's all right. Got Battered and bruised, the girls are led away to the van. Right. Where, to their astonishment, they learn that they've broken the law. Surprising. Whilst they're taken into custody, PC seizes the baying crowd. Jane. Watch your language, please, kid. I didn't swear. I listen, never listen, swear. Listen, there's no need for anybody else That's to get involved in this. It could have got out of hand. But thank God there was enough of us here, really, at the end of the day, to, to deal with it. Um, so hopefully, it looks like a good start to the night. Much of the night cop's time is spent dealing with disorderly behaviour, and these two are tonight paying the price for their actions. Such incidents are often dealt with using the Public Order Act, a comprehensive piece of legislation that includes Section 5. Fella, 
You are next, Section 5, public order. You just... That's a clause which allows the police to stop anybody from disturbing the peace, whether it be through their actions or even the language they use. Relax. What's he doing wrong? He called me, and I quote, a fucking prick. So if a police officer thinks your actions are causing somebody else distress, then chances are you'll find yourself under arrest. Back in Exmouth, PCs have been called away from the carnival to deal with an incident at the local train station. We'll go to the ladies' toilets and just see what's happening. When they arrive, they discover it was a false alarm. As you can obviously see, it's quite excitable at the moment. Um, potentially, a few more drinks, um, a few more people. Uh, things are just going to get busier and busier. For now, though, their presence is needed back at the carnival. But just as they're about to leave, PC calls his colleague back into the fray. He spotted an angry young man getting involved in some argy-bargy and punching a window. Tell you what, mate, come and have a, come and have a little chat and don't no, fucking Harry. touch me. Yes, because I don't appreciate being sworn at and being challenged. Now get in the car a minute. Watch your head. Put your legs in. Basically, this, this chap's obviously got a problem with the police and the general public. And um, you've basically gone to speak to him. Come and have a little chat and don't know. Fucking touch me. And he's turned around and at the mouth. He's told us to basically uh, disappear, but not quite so politely. We've then gone to speak to him, and he's become quite resistant to us, so we're just going to try and find out what the actual issue is and to see if we've got any offences. So PC goes to chat with the Little Punk's friends to get their side of the story. Right. No, I, I'm quite happy with that, but all I'm saying is, obviously, he's got attitude with me, I've punched the window, we can't to speak to him, and he's told us to F off, and he? It's all out. So there you go. Prison. We will do. <laughs> with friends like these, who needs enemies? What's the problem, then? You've obviously got a few issues. Yeah, but listen, if you just talk to me like a human being, well, we were going to. We were going to try and move you away from whatever the problem yeah, was. I think that was the cleverest thing to do. It was the cleverest thing to do. But obviously telling me to F off and becoming aggressive towards us isn't. Now, we're obviously very busy tonight to be dealing with trivial, stupid little matters and people, drunk teenagers. Having questioned the separate parties, the officers compare notes. It's just that he split up with his girlfriend tonight and I said, that, to be honest, mate, it doesn't matter. He can't punch a window and tell somebody to F off, can he? Whereabouts an exit do you live? What are you planning to do now? Because I'm not happy to leave you in Exmouth, so we've got a couple of options, right? Yeah, where, are you meant, where are you meant to be staying this evening? Look, I'm not drunk, I'm just very angry. Right, I can see you're very angry, all right? And I'm not happy to leave you on the street if you're very angry. So the, so the night cops have given the young punk the option of A, spending the night in a cell, or B, going home and coming back later to face a public order offence. And then we can deal with you. What is the point in that? Well, the point so is... Go to court for a public order offence. Or we can deal with you later in the week. Yeah, By the way, the fixed penalty case. ticket. A fi how much? A fixed penalty ticket is £80. 80 quid for what? For being disorderly. No, I'll tell you what, would you right. rather... Tell you what, put your foot in there, mate, and I'll find... It's fine, we'll arrest you, it's not a problem, no, right? It's fine. No, no, no. The lad's back chat has left the night cop no option, and he's arrested. Coming up, the night cops stumble across a body in the road. Yeah, is it possible just to have an ambulance here to check this man? He's breathing and the day. Can you hear me? And the young punk just will not let it lie. I wasn't getting aggressive or anything. I was just asking questions. It's my right to ask questions about that. In Exmouth, PC Matt has been dealing with a member of the travelling fair whose old folks have a thoroughly modern approach to parenting. I'd like you to take him away, put him in a cell, just chuck him out tomorrow. But Mummy's left the night cops with a dilemma. If we nick him now, what do we nick him for? He's been a gentleman with me. With us, yeah, I know. So they've called CCTV Control, who are analysing footage to see if the man has committed an offence. Yeah, 
And sure enough... It's looking like he's either going to be arrested for a substantive public order offence, uh, say criminal damage or causing harassment, alarm, distress, or otherwise um, he's going to be arrested to prevent a further breach of the peace. Now we're arresting you, Section 5 of the Public Order Act. Yeah, yeah we'll take your text to the mate, get you sobered up, get all out in the morning. Oh, Jobs are good. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, our, uh, our gents got himself arrested for uh, Section 5 of the Public Order Act, which is basically causing harassment, alarm, distress to someone, uh, which is uh, the incident that occurred earlier in the pub. There you go, chap. So he's going to get uh, a free ride to exit the custody and uh, he'll get his head down there for the night. Yep, we'll help. We'll help him there, the police station. Yep, yep, there you go, mate. Yeah, fine. So a little mad a bit. <laughs> yep. You'll okay, be fine, so mate. So, that's it. Watch yourself as you step All up right. there. Up you go. Sit yourself down on that that's seat. It. Make yourself comfy. Top man, Asa, well done. Lovely. Our sergeant got back in touch with the camera operators. They said that there'd been an incident early on which we weren't aware of where he'd seen quite clearly peeing up the side of a parked unattended car in Exmouth and two ladies have walked past it and they appear to have been quite shocked or upset by this incident. Generally when we arrest um, people on the whole they tend to be um, fairly placid with us once they've been arrested. They've realised that there's no point in, in fighting or trying to to play up because it's not going to improve their position at all so um, yeah generally like this gent in the back he's just going to sit there quietly uh, hopefully we'll book him in without without any further event and um, he'll get his head down go to sleep and uh, sleep off the beer hey sir yeah here we are chap up at Everett road are we next sir we are here we are mate now watch yourself at lockup, the man seems strangely at home. A lot of people uh, are quite relaxed when they're in custody. Um, they, they may have been arrested before, or it could be their first time, they're just taking it in, but people generally, once they get this far, there's, there's not much point in putting up a fight, because they know they're not going to get anywhere, so they may as well just sit back and uh, enjoy it as best they can. It appears as well that this man has left his mark in Exmouth on a previous occasion. Last year, Last October, the gentleman did exactly the same offence in Exmouth, um, urinating in a public place, which was outside one of our public houses on the Friday night, so therefore he's going to get charged. Tomorrow morning, went over to appear at Central Devon Magistrates Court in about a week's time for Section 5 of the Public Order Act. Yeah, hopefully he will learn his lesson from this. Um, obviously he's done it before, and uh, he's obviously got away uh, more lightly before, but with a bit of luck, this will be a slightly harsher penalty for him, and uh, he'll learn his lesson and won't do it again. Fingers crossed. So one culprit is learning his lesson in a cell. Meanwhile, back at the town's train station, another culprit is giving a lesson on the subject of civil liberties. I wasn't getting aggressive or anything. I was just asking questions. It's my right to ask questions about that. Basically, we've had a chat with a chap that's punched the window and has been quite aggressive towards myself and my colleague. We've explained some options of the ways we can deal with him. Unfortunately, he's refusing to calm down. He's still being quite uh, obstructive. You're arresting me for what? If we hadn't arrested you, they could be chatting. You talk, you sound like my bloody headmaster in primary school. He's been a little bit aggressive, so the decision's been made that he's going to be taken into custody tonight. Can you get on to the big air and an ambulance at York in that's it, mate. Unfortunately, you're now taking us away from more serious situations like that, aren't you? Because you won't, you know, cooperate with us. Because it's going to take us off the street now for the next hour, hour and a half. But if that's where he wants to be, then that's what we're going to do. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're all talking rubbish. I heard a report someone's been knocked out and you're arresting yeah. me. Did I lash out and try and hit you? Did I get abusive and start swearing? No. I did, no, that was at the beginning. I did not do that. That's enough of an offence, mate. I'm a 17-year-old lad, for Christ's sake. What damage am I going to be able to cause? Who knows, mate? That's why you've been arrested. Oh, okay, yourself, no, no, OK. You're oh, uh, free, freedom to speech. Hole. Freedom to speech. Freedom to ask questions and know where they stand. I did that and look where I am now. You need to... Uh, all right, mate, anything that you say, you keep thinking what you want. <laughs> That's what went where my colleague is. The lad's behaviour has taken the night cops off the street for two hours, time that could have been better spent. Once at lock-up, it's the custody sergeant's turn to get a taste of his attitude. Should we go to any sort of special school? No. Any problems reading or writing? No. Any need for you to be seen by a doctor? No. 
Have you taken any drugs tonight? No. Have you taken any drugs on you? No. Have any alcohol? No. No? No. Every detainee needs to have articles that could be used in self-harm removed. That'll have to come off, mate. You, yeah, you nice. necklace. You take your chain off for me. We've got pockets. Stripped down, it's time for the young punk to spend the night in a cell. But first, oh, that's kind of good. Good. I'm not looking at you because I want to. I'm looking at you because I've got to. Oh, All right. Yeah. Drunk drivers are often perceived as the biggest killers on the road. There is, though, another alcohol-induced individual who causes more deaths, the drunken pedestrian. Indeed, 80% of all pedestrian deaths that take place at the weekend are due to that person being hammered. Most of them stumbling into the road and the path of a moving vehicle. Tonight in Colwyn Bay, a man has taken this stupidity one step further. We just have a report um, of a male line in the middle of a, a dual carriageway. So we're just approaching now just to see um, what's happening. The bloke has passed out in the middle of the town's busiest road. It could be, though, that he's seriously injured. Do we need an ambulance at all? Yeah, is it possible just to have an ambulance here to check this man? Um, he's not responding to us. He probably is very intoxicated, but just to make sure that he isn't. What's your name, mate? Can you hear me? Please, you wake up. Hello? Can you hear me? Is he breathing or anything, Dave? Can you hear me? Come on, try and stick yourself up, mate. He looks Please. like he's in his early 20s, yeah. he does. Has he got any identification on him at all? Thank you. Once they're happy that he's not injured, they move him to safety and start to search him. And then we've removed him off the road, onto the pavement, checked him out. We've uh, tried to find out if he had any identification on him. The only ID they can find is his mobile, which they scan for a home number. Eventually, he regains consciousness, giving the night cops the opportunity to question him. We're here to help you. What's your name? Well, where do you live then, so we can take you home? <laughs> well, you can't stay in the street all night, can you? But the night cops think they know who he is. Um, we believe um, he's from the forces and he's obviously uh, on some leave this time. He's had a few too many beers and he's decided to uh, go to sleep in the middle of the road, which isn't safe for him or other road users. And we've let the local officers deal with him, see if we can um, maybe get him home to somewhere a bit safer. But I believe uh, since leaving the area, he's become uh, worse and he's been arrested for a public order offence. Another public order offence, another £80 fine, and another successful night for the night cops. Next time on Night Cops. That we believe there's possibly drugs on this vehicle that should not be on there. We meet a Rexham man who's been doing a spot of moonlighting. You were just saying, sir. We've just found um, six cut and fed deals already for distribution. In Edinburgh, this young lady loses her hair, her dignity, and finally complete control. <laughs> and this unfortunate night cop knows exactly what he saw. He's walking down the road with his penis in his hand, pissing. That's why he's been arrested.